let's get started with the interview then. That has been the book overview. Um, it's with 17 chapters, it's really covering a lot of ground about C++, but also about um, embedded. And then let's see um, to the audience, just if you have questions, then post them to the chat. And I, of course, have some questions prepared. So generally, you know, we are in the embedded space. So maybe let's start with that. Um, what embedded hardware have you used to test the code and run the code on uh, for yeah. the book? Uh, so the the uh, code is using the uh, STM32F071 uh, target, uh, but uh, you, you don't need actual developer uh, development kit in, in order to be able to run the code as uh, you, you can download Docker container, which has the entire tool chain uh, prepared for you. And it also has a Renode simulator, which allows you to run compiled code uh, in the simulator, right? So uh, you, you can also, if, if you want, you can uh, run the code, you can flash your uh, target with the firmware, but in general, uh, if uh, you are reading the book, you, you don't need uh, the development kit, development board at all. Indeed. Um, so I think it's fairly clear for which this audience the book is. Um, but like, let, let's take for a minute with C++, uh, what standards have you used or mostly used in the book? Uh, the, the book covers uh, features uh, from standards up, up to C++ 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I've seen uh, uh, mm -hmm. of 23. Um, but yeah. I, I, a lot of developers are still on 17, and now we're moving on to a new feature. So the book has yeah. that covered. Um, that was also my impression. Um, let's uh, go into some of the audience questions. Oops. So Melizio asks, why don't you use SDL containers with specialized allocators? Yeah, that's, that's also an option, right? Uh, I haven't tried to write a specialized allocator. Uh, to be honest, I think that's quite challenging to get it right, uh, to guarantee uh, the execution time, which is something that's also important in regards of the real-time embedded systems. Uh, you want to be sure that the allocation would always take a certain amount of time, right? Uh, Still, uh, yeah, that's that's a possibility. But uh, ETL embedded template library uh, is an alternative uh, for for the containers. Yeah, and I, I think one thing one always has to see is that the the space in a book is limited. So going into such corners as how to specialize uh, allocators for embedded um, might be then a bit too much. Um, which actually brings me to a question like, you know, we see a lot of chapters in the book, but like what topics didn't make it? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'd say a lot. Uh, so uh, things such as bit set is not in the book. Uh, some of the examples I initially had in mind that uh, could have been more visually appealing to people are not there. So uh, one of the ideas I had is seven segment uh, display and it uh, didn't end in the book. And yeah, there's there's quite a few things that that are not there. So uh, by no any means, this is this is not a complete guide. Uh, for the C++ in embedded systems, it is, uh, let's call it missing uh, a lot of things. I wish they were there, but uh, I, I was limited by time. And if you'd put everything in a book, it would be 
a really, really, really big book, right? Indeed. Uh, do you have plans like for a follow-up book? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see uh, how this goes. Uh, let's see uh, how the reception from the people is. Uh, the book was published on 2nd of July, so that was like 15 days ago. So in uh, following months, I expect to receive uh, more feedback uh, from people who read the book. And I guess that everything will depend on that. If the book is accepted well, then yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's maybe something we, we should mention that the book is, is kind of new. And yeah. um, so Belizio has a second question. Yes. How can you be sure that an SCD function doesn't allocate memory while storing lambdas? Uh, one of the things to do is to override new and delete operators and just to monitor them and see if uh, they're being called by anything. And that's just uh, one of the ways to uh, make sure that uh, no one is trying to do any memory allocation. But if you want to be 100% certain, then uh, just avoid it, right? Yeah, I think that especially like you bring up the ETL in this context that you know that they offer the type which doesn't allocate. And yeah. on the other hand, um, I think with lambdas, you're on the safe side when you're using function. Um, but I, I've had also you know some pitfalls with function and coding them, etc. Um, so. There's another question. Do you plan to create an online course with the topics from the book? Uh, no, not, not, not really. I don't, I don't have any plans, to be honest, uh, at the moment. Yeah. OK. Um, then how does this book help you to write better C++ code? Mm. Uh, well, uh, the intention of the book is to introduce C++ to people who are mainly using C in uh, their daily work. And uh, I did uh, the best of my ability to write a good and uh, well-structured C++ code. Uh, maybe I failed at some parts, and if you have any, you know, uh, criticism on, on some portions of it, please let me know. Um, also I think that the, the book probably reflects uh, your own style and what you do on your, on your company, how you um, yep. do your process. There. So uh, what did you learn about C++ while writing the book? Uh, uh, this is a tough one. Um, I had to explore some some uh, portions of, uh, of of what I was already applying, and uh, I was taking some uh, things for granted that uh, I discovered later on that are perhaps a bit different. And uh, one of them is mostly related to uh, the uh, the standard library. So uh, the one that's being used is uh, based on uh, nano standard library. And uh, there are just a few different ways to compile that library uh, with or without exceptions. And in turn, you end up with uh, quite a big difference in terms of the memory consumptions. and it turns out that the exceptions exceptions in this uh, implementation are quite expensive. Uh, I haven't uh, spent more time uh, digging out, uh, you know, about exceptions and seeing if there's any better implementation. So that's one of the things that I'm quite interested in. And uh, yeah, once. I have some more time. That's something that I'd like to explore further. Uh, so uh, by the time of writing book, I wasn't even considering using exceptions. And in one of the chapters, I 
wrote about them and only then I saw how a uh, big portion of uh, of the flash they actually take uh, perhaps it's implementation specific perhaps the library itself can be compiled a bit differently to still have exceptions and uh, to reduce that size so uh, that's that's one of the things that surprised me a bit mm, yeah so I think that with embedded audience exceptions are not too popular but uh, yeah, that's, the, that's quite the, correct. The question in, in the recent years always has become like, what, what kind of embedded are you working on? And systems have grown and there's definitely some space for where exceptions could make sense. Um, outside of that, you probably have this code then shared ac across your platform and then maybe that's not making sense anymore. Um, yeah. But so one, one topic which I saw which has been very important in the last decade in C++ generally is like the exploration of multi-threaded code. And I wonder mm -hmm. just, you know, how is that being seen in the embedded world? Um, uh, so uh, the most of the projects that I worked on are still utilizing free Artos, uh, which has the threads or tasks as they called. And uh, in certain applications, it's uh, actually used quite a lot. Uh, I haven't, uh, I didn't have a chance to use uh, C++ in uh, those kinds of environment uh, in, in last year or so. Uh, I've been mostly working with C on, on projects for our clients. Uh, but yeah, uh, multi-threaded code is used quite a lot, especially on a big and, and complex um, systems. Okay. Um, so just for the audience, if you have any more questions, um, now is kind of the time to add them to the chat. Um, there is probably like when, when we talk about embedded and the, the, the book covers a bit of safety, um, we, we should talk about Rust, you know. Is, do, do you see Rust in the embedded space? Is that something which is coming up? Uh, I, I see a lot of people talking about it, and I see a certain companies are started adopting it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm seeing uh, Rust getting its way into the, uh, into the embedded. Uh, last year and a half or so, I was pretty much occupied with writing uh, the book, so I didn't really had a chance to explore Rust more, but uh, I, I got the basic premises of it, uh, the borrow checker and uh, what it offers in terms of uh, type and memory safety, uh, and uh, those things are always welcomed in, in the embedded systems, especially those that are safety critical. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I definitely see Rust having its place in the embedded All right, and there's also a question and comment in which I see on LinkedIn, but it doesn't show up here in the local studio. So let me quickly copy that into a banner and then I can show it here. So while, while we are at the topic of Rust, um, so these days are, you know, they are exploring ways of using Rust Lang in our code for C++. Um, what are your thoughts about mixing Rust Lang with C++ for dedicated modules and written in Rust, for example? Um, uh, to be honest, I don't have a hands-on experience uh, on, on Rust or on mixing these two, but if Rust is solving a problem for you, and you want to use that as a module in C++ or vice versa, I don't see any any reasons against that. Uh, both Trust and C++ are tools in, in our world, so uh, using the right tool for the right problem is uh, most certainly welcome, right? So if you see that a good fit, then go for it. Yeah, I think uh, the interoperability of Rust and C++ is something which some people explore currently. And yeah. for example, in CSMini C++, we have one talk about that. 
I know that the KAB is exploring it in the context of doing Rust with Qt. And so um, there's definitely areas where you find information about that. Um, but then again, it's like when 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 you do embed it with C plus plus, and your everyday work is like C and and C plus plus, then um, it's hard to find like actually you know someone to to pay for your time to go into Rust and to figure out what the best way is to connect that. Um, so I hope that we that we get a better way of you know having the standardized and um, mm -hmm. become part of our world. Um, and that brings us pretty much to the end, uh, I think. Um, I have no more questions. It's a very interesting book. Thank you for taking your time and taking the time to write this book and sharing your own knowledge with us, uh, which is very interesting in, in this book, definitely. And um, I see that at least one person has bought the book already. So thank you, Florin. And thank you very much. Uh, with that, Amar, final words. Um, yeah, I, I might be biased as I, uh, you know, love C++. Uh, I, I really, that, that's something that I really enjoy. So th this is me being completely biased, right? Uh, and yeah, I just think it's great for the embedded systems. And if you would like to actually see what it can do for you, uh, then read, read the book, right? Uh, but th th this is a completely biased opinion of mine. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think we're on the same page there. I'm, I'm also a bit biased towards C++, and I think yeah. the audience yeah. we reach is too. Um, but generally, interesting topic today, and lots of interest. Saw a lot of people in the in the chat and also in the stream on LinkedIn. Um, and if you made it so far, a recording will be out on Saturday. Um, anyways, thank you for your time, and I'm going. Thank to you, Jens. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Also, last but not least, thank you to Peck for providing the book and you know making this possible. Yeah.